don't need a bigger knife. Yeah. Greetings, everybody. We're back around the table again today to continue our look at the SHOT Show new announcements and offerings and whatnots. The whatnot. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. The old whatnots. And there will be whatnots. We'll get there. Yeah. And so we're going to kick off with honorable mentions. These didn't make Tuesday's video as the best ofs, but these are also things that kind of caught our eye. They're worth checking out yourselves. They were on our radars. So there you go. Yeah, uh, my choice for the honorable mention was the uh, little Tops EDC pocket slingshot. <laughs> I find that adorable. That it's goddamn choice. ridiculous. I'm going <laughs> to say it right now. It's, it's so cute. Ridiculous, but it's also kind of great. It's, it's like functional and I want it. It fits yeah. into a watch pocket. Yeah. I watched the guy do it. Yeah. Yeah. I looked it in like yeah. it was nobody's business. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, just like birdshot. Yeah. I have a soft spot for like the, the miniature trebuchets and like the office warfare sort of stuff. Mini and, cannons. Yeah. And like that just falls right into that. So the comment they made about flinging mini Skittles at people. Yeah. Like, kind of <laughs> I would totally be that guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's you why you be. can never have one. Say, oh, yeah. I'll catch you Getting one. Yes. Oh man. We're gonna end up at thumbtacks getting thrown at everybody. <laughs> oh. Um, my honorable mention, and again, it's from a company that keeps on popping up on my radar. Viper Knives came out with a knife called the Berus. B e r u s. Berus. 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 Yeah. Um, little fixed blade. Four different variations. We'll pop up pictures of it right now. I think this thing's bad as hell. M three ninety carbon fibers. All sorts of sexy good times. Yeah, and as we learned in the earlier video this week with the comments about the uh, pair of scale from CRKT. It's all right if you're wrong. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I, I don't hate the overall knife, but the different size lanyard, like the holes for like the for the studs, right? It really just looks to me like unevenly stretched earlobes, and that's a personal pet peeve of mine. See, for me, it's the front end of the handle where it has that weird clip. It yeah, looks, on the spine side of it. It looks like that's gonna bother me. I might be wrong. It might feel fine. Yeah. Hand, Nothing bothers you. But it looks like it might bug me. That part bothers me. The really, really deep middle finger choil and then how awkwardly wide the blades look. Like, it's just, nah. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis. No, that's okay. That's okay. I don't care. And I'm sure other oh, people will agree with me. And yes, for Vox has got a huge following on this Yeah, he one. does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure those knives will sell well. Um, yeah. I'm just, um, um, the back lanyard ring I will justify is there is actually a lot of applications that you can use that ring with other than carabiner bushcraft. Like <laughs> Fox tried to play <laughs> off on their bullshit knife on Tuesday. Um, 100%. I just wish they were evenly sized. The, yeah. the one picture that I did post of the marbled carbon fiber with the draw point type of thing, the, the fit and finish on that knife looks absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> I will argue pretty. that. And, yeah. and from Viper knives from something that wasn't necessarily on the radar on anyone's radar are five or six years ago from Viper Knives. They've been impressing the crap out of me lately. Yeah. So even just them as a company deserves honorable mention for me. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, the honorable mention, um, kind of a shocker for me, they released a new version of Gerber Fastball using a cleaver blade with 20 CV. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Uh, Gerber, 20 CV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gerber, 20 CV. <laughs> for an American price point of... Around 140 bucks for American yeah. made. The twenty is not even from Gerber. At all. <laughs> well, to save the money on that. Curious about the heat. Yeah. Apparently, the S30V from the regular fastball has been pretty good. And when I saw that knife come out, I was like, wow, okay. Is that the all first right. time around or the second time around? Well, uh, no, that was the first time, I think. And it's there. it's really like Gerber's S30V might have a great heat treatment, but 90% of the blades that they're on are so goddamn thick that you'll never know cutting performance <laughs> from right. them anyway. But the right? fastball is like they're pretty thin it's blades. Not bad. Uh, out of the box, they're pretty chunky. You That's, might want to reprofile yeah, mm -hmm. to get the optimum performance out of that 20 CV. But well, yeah, I, but I'm interested for the price, like for American made. Holy crap. I do like the fastball, like as a design overall. Yeah. I like that design. Mismatch scales were a little disappointing. I would have liked to see a liner lock on Always, that yeah, myself. Yeah. All the same, it's cool to see this happening from Gerber. It's nice to see yeah. that they're taking these steps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then for me, my honorable mention is uh, it's from Boker Knives. It's their... Plumwood series of um, modern traditionals. I guess they're more old school traditionals. Um, they're using plum wood, which is kind of neat in the sense that it ages the same way that a high carbon steel blade will or a micarta handle will. Right. 
and they start off kind of a nice light brown and over time they're going to turn like a really nice dark purple and they actually said it was because of uv light yeah mm-hmm. so the more outdoors the more you are with you that get, the more yeah. you use it yeah so in alberta it's kind of a slow burn i guess <laughs> <laughs> alberta or, well, well Calgary is the sunniest city in canada i was gonna say compared yeah, to know, vancouver but, yeah. <laughs> well okay sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah let's do some rainy day counts and we're not so doing so bad you can get a sunburn on a cloudy day anyway so so you'll still get the uv through yeah um, and they're a cool story i can't remember exactly what it is but it's some family that has small plum tree blah 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 that yeah. they had a contract with to be able to get this because of the rare exotic wood being hard most definitely so cool. just super cool yeah indeed just my favorite color i yep. like that purple so and then on to our what the fuck picks right. of the show these are <laughs> the moments that we were just shaking our heads yeah questioning life yep. Uh, main one that stood out for me was the uh, tactical tweezers from Civivi. <laughs> yeah. It stood out to everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still feel like these are going to be the next fidget spinner, and it bothers me. Mm. Really hot. Hot. Not. hot for There's no way. Vanishes. There's I, no I way on not. this. This is going to be such a flash in the pan, and Bob Terzola is going to be <laughs> retired like he should have been a while. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> He's still coming out with good stuff. Yeah. But yeah. this yeah. is brutal. Like, I definitely enjoy tweezers. They are a useful tool when they're needed, but as an EDC item... I don't you get the feeling that Bob's just fucking with us. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> and him and well. them trying to stretch it to a tactical pressure point Kubo pen application yeah. is, is well. really stretching. So cringy. I, I do like the fact that you can squeeze on those tweezers and they don't separate. Mm-hmm. For tweezers, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, it's a sign of good tweezers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a tactical application for it. What's their price point on a pair of tweezers going to be? Yeah. Two? That's it's going to be scary. <laughs> you yeah. still have you like two deploy your tactical tweezers you have to unscrew a nut Mm -hmm. and then push it out and then re-screw it back down so how is that a tactical anything you just happen to have your tweezers out and somebody attacks you and slide them yeah that's actually kind of the definition of tactical is just being able to use what's at hand well no but the action of getting them out out like it's ready for you no, it's an ultra specific scenario where you know you're being followed, so you stealthily get your tactical tweezers at the ready. <laughs> when you could go for your arm. phone or your yeah. knife or a chain or anything Ugh. else, but no, you go for your tweezers. Your keys. Yeah. Like, there's so many other things you can take. Anyway. The tactical tweezers are attached to. It's just a, very much a what the hell, or why. Yeah. Well, that's so if one thing doesn't work on your keychain, <laughs> you can now refer to the next thing on the ring or like the a, next thing. Just until... like a Swiss Army knife. Oh, you can't cut it with the knife? Try yeah, exactly. using the bottle opener. See if that works any better. I got a Gerber shard here that's not good for anything else let's try it like (laughs) shade uh yeah yeah. on that note uh my what the f moment for shot show this year we're not montez you can say it um (laughs) kershaw in general came out with a whole bunch of things but one in particular they came out with a dividend that's got a composite blade and it's actually a really cool looking composite blade it went from the like the shark dogs from world war one world war two on the bomber pilot kind of look to it and that's why it has the good appearance on it and the reason for the sort of green that they did was also tied into that yeah Yeah. and on one end they did a link with 20 cv that absolutely was knocked out of the park Mm -hmm. and then they came out with this dividend and the composite blade is not what i have an issue with i'm throwing shade on n690 once again (laughs) um for some reason they've never done it before the spine is done with n690 cobalt and Mm -hmm. the cutting edge is done with d2 now the question i have to ask you about that is a couple years ago um they stopped using sandvik steels like they stopped their exclusive deal with sandvik steel are they doing anything else in Savic Steel right now? All the leaks, all, all the blurs. The are they, okay, the, so they still have it? Okay. You bet. Fair enough. Yeah, they're still rocking it that hard. That was going to be my argument was, too, I think. The composite leak right now is a 1428 yeah, Sandvik. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's actually going to be a, a relatively cheaper model. It's still going to be a decent price point. I can't complain about that. But that's the obscurity weird, of you know? they've never done it before. Even ZT, they've come out with D2s on the spines. So maybe they're jumping on that Spyderco bandwagon and just throwing <laughs> out steels just to do it. Even, maybe. well, pivot collars. But anyway, <laughs> even in the write-up, we'll though, makes the least amount of sense to me. Their write-up talks about N6. 690 for their choice on the spine because of things like uh i think it's hardness and corrosion Corrosion resistance resistance. Mm -hmm. so i've highlighted corrosion resistance because the cutting edge is made out of d2 yeah um the thing that popped into my mind initially with that is 
what have they done on the spine for other stuff with D2? And it's usually the... It's usually the 14 14 C20. Which they also say because of the corrosion resistance. They do as a general sweeping Yeah. 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 But why the change? Yeah, but it's just I'm pointing out the the phrase of that. I wonder if it gives you a sharper um, distinction if you patina the D2. Be blasted. <laughs> it prevents it. So, yeah. No, it prevents it from. It's uh, the heavy B blast. It's like whatever, so it prevents it from actually developing any sort of patina on it. Say, but yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah. it'll rust before it patina. Sure, so you have to sand that? that knife down to I've, even get a patina on I've it. Had that happen with Kershaw okay. Skylines in the past. The uh, other thing that they have for the D two being on the cutting edge is because of its great edge retention. Now, is this throwing shade at N690's edge retention? Because they didn't use it on the cut again. They They've been watching bit. your videos. Now, <laughs> on a lot of people's other yeah. charts, N690 and D2 are actually in a comparable cutting chart, like performance. Uh, <laughs> isn't that more like VG10 so, in practice? Like, anyway, that's, yeah. yeah. The, the whole description of why they made this knife doesn't make sense in the slightest. Yeah. Speaking of shit that doesn't make sense, my what the fuck moment in this case was Artisan Cutleries and a uh, CJRB. Uh, they have a prototype lock. They didn't have a name as far as Blade HQ's video, and I couldn't find any other source on their Instagram or anything. As you'll see in the picture, the way this lock works is you're pulling the back end of the top portion of the spine right behind the blade, kind of like an access lock, and that's what causes the knife to fold. That doesn't sound like it's a problem until you realize that if you grip your knife, say, like this, and you pull even slightly, it looks like it's very easy to disengage that mm -hmm. lock. And this may not be a problem when you're cutting into stuff, but if you're coming back, or if you're trying to lift out of material and you hit that sideways... It, or even in a downward yeah. motion, if you're and, going down enough... Then... And if you think I'm crazy, well, in the Blade HQ video, they actually talk about, oh, we... We designed the flipper to be long enough to catch your finger and if it accidentally disengages. Like so basically you're trying to salvage a prototype yeah. that's flawed in its design. I was gonna say, you actually watch that guy that's talking about the knife disengage the lock exactly the way that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And almost try and like play it up as a feature that you can close the knife like that. And it's like no. no. <laughs> and the extended flipper tab is actually the exact thing that I chuckled at as soon as I mentioned. They were yeah. like, hey, we took too long getting this lock to market and it's still not good. So we made this safety so we could actually try to sell this <laughs> damn thing because it's going to fail on you. And we all know it's going to fail on you. And, and we're still going to put it out with it. Like you might as well be a Spyderco tropin that has the backside <laughs> going to slice you up. And they're like, no. You can't see that. It's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong anyway, with it. Anyway, it's, it's one of those things where like the quick action and the, the ease of Okay, sure. I, I in concept, I enjoy this idea of that lock, but the execution it needs way more refinement. And the fact that this is the third shot show that they've had it take come two on, guys. take two more years and get it right instead That's of releasing it. it now. I was yeah. gonna say I think we can all agree that we all like the access lock. That action right. makes sense. And with a coil, I, I I've always said with a coil spring that action would be amazing. And they said that there's an inbuilt spring in the backspacer. Like it's yeah. it's nicely done. It's like just, an anthem. Come on, guys, <laughs> make it less hazardous, please. That's it. Um, and then I guess that leads on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess that leads on to me. I'm the last shade guy. Shade it up there, buddy. Uh, my shade <laughs> is thrown at the Kaiser rep and oh, yeah. Zach from Blade HQ. It's not actually, <laughs> it's not actually the object itself. Calling two people out in the <laughs> I'm calling them straight out. Well, I don't know the first guy's name. Right. Uh, I'm sure he said it, and I'm a jerk for not knowing <laughs> it, but Zach should have known better. Um, the, it's called, the knife is called the Inversion. The entire way through the description of this knife, they're holding it in a reverse grip. Show when, me what you mean by reverse grip. Yeah. So they're they're holding the knife like this when the knife is clearly designed to be held like this, and it's got a finger choil right here to like, or sorry, right here to lock your hand in in a reverse grip. Very similar to the way you would hold a knife if you were like knife fighting. Like with old well, Bowie knives and stuff like that. Yeah, very, like very. Spider Co. Pical. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, perfect. They even made a fixed blade that I can't mm -hmm. remember the reverse because you could pop the handle out and put it forward and yeah. backwards. You bet. The knife is called the inversion. It's literally in the fucking name. <laughs> and if yeah. you look and at the like, handle scales, <laughs> you can't look at that knife and not know how to put it in it's your hand. So like, oh, that's apparently what apparently you can. And they both did it wrong. <laughs> at first they thought that Zach's like, oh, no, no, no. Zach is just showing it off for the camera so you can see. But then he holds it weird and the rep tries and to take it. And then they start talking about it. Yeah. 
And, and oh, on top of that, I mean, it could just be Mr. Part, Rep but... Guy and everything else that he came at us with was a pretty good job. But Mr. Rep Guy being all cocky with the pinky, pinky flipper opening uh-huh. into a reverse grip. <laughs> that oh, called so to me, stupid. and you know why. Because oh, I've done it. If yeah. that was a traditional yeah. knife, like a normal knife that you would open in a reverse grip, that would be awesome. But yeah. the smirk on his face when he does it, as, open he it, as it he's open. doing it backwards, is priceless. It's priceless. Yeah. You know yeah. people at like the Kaiser head office are just like holding their head and just being like, what were you guys doing? <laughs> it was in the name. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to market the Laconico instead. The, the new one. And like, just, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, it, it hurt my feelings. Understandable. So yeah, that will kind of round up our honorable mention and the, what the fucks of the shot show for this year. I had several WTFs. <laughs> um, last minute call out because we have time. I will, you were talking about Gerber changing stuff up a yeah. little bit with the 20 TV and stuff. I got to actually give credit where credit's due for SOG changing it up this year. They're coming right. out with XHPs. They're coming out with S35s. Cool S35s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, way to step up your game. I hope that your production quality yeah. can match your steel <laughs> quality. I remember hearing something a little while ago about how they were trying to get themselves out of the like Walmart and Cabela's market yes. and try to get Good up to the next level. Yeah. yeah been anecdotal but today i actually got to handle a terminus xr and i have to say the build quality was actually yeah. pretty decent so it's nice to see that they're continuing that train of thought so last moment whatever good yeah. for you guys hope you can come out of the walmarts and actually show us what you're capable of so Indeed. but don't get into pivot collars <laughs> oh yeah on that note we also have time can we take a quick second and say what the hell with everyone, everyone. this year <laughs> yeah custom knife makers that's all i'm gonna say mm-hmm. they, they, they all of them are doing it and it's yeah. a thing now and if you watch any trend that goes through the custom knife world, it always ends up in the production knife world. Almost always. Pivot colors. Pivot They're colors. So hot right now. Cleavers. So back, hot right well, now. backspacers. Colors. <laughs> yeah. Splashes of colors. Um, throwing shade on Kershaw. You can throw CR, uh, or three okay, CR, 13 MOV, but if you put a pivot collar on it, you can charge 80 bucks. <laughs> I, was I, was gonna say, I don't, I don't know, know what the price point is. I was just, just for the record. say like yeah. backspacers that are like standoff. Like they're almost like ghost backspacers where there's space mm-hmm. around them on both sides. Yeah, like, milled backspacers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that lately. Yeah, which awesome I mean, the custom world. Yep, nothing wrong with that. I don't hate. I don't yeah, hate. Yep. No, don't get me wrong. But it is like, but it's everywhere. Uh, you're We're all doing it at the same time. Ciao, yep. boys and girls. Like yeah. it's crazy. Like they yeah. had a secret meeting. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Rounding it out. Uh, we are doing our Instagram giveaway. Uh, last mm-hmm. day was today to get it in. So you've got till midnight tonight. I was going to ask. Yeah. Midnight tonight? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. in Friday, January 31st. We will be uh, doing the giveaway over the weekend and probably announcing early the following week where we're going to be shipping some cool stuff as well as the uh, runner up, follow up, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, go over to the Instagram post where we did post our contest for the rules and regulations. Do it now while you can. Time is running out. Mm-hmm. And then while you're doing that, uh, jump on over to the Pokey Factor Patreon page as well. Uh, that's where we're going to be having our next giveaway. So sign up and become a member and get in line for that and see what other behind the scenes goodies we'll have for you. Maybe one day we can go to Blade Show or Shot Show. And just talk and shit. Show. Both of them. Yeah. Both of yeah. them. Yeah. Just talk shit in front of the booth. Damn straight. Do you see this shit? Yeah. Hey, hey, come over. Come over. Explain this crap. <laughs> I'm never allowed yourself. back again. No, no. One time visit over. We don't even last an hour before we're kicked out. I'm calling it out. <laughs> so, yeah, that being that, this is Nigel the Smith signing off. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Pipers. I am the Iron Joe. Exile.ca. We will catch you again next week. And we are never get never getting into the That's right, the Ben. Show. Left-handed pocket clip. <laughs> Just saying, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs>